Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can configure confederation on BGP on Arcanus devices. The topology consists of multiple autonomous systems, but two of them are going to be of more interest for us in this topology. First of all, let's take a look at the topology, and after that, I'm going to tell you why I'm configuring confederation in AS100, and after that, I start the configuration. So if I zoom into my topology here, you can see that there are two of the autonomous systems that are going to be of interest for us. AS200 on the right consists of three running rudder for now. Rudder 10 is the rod reflector. And by configuring rudder 10 as rod reflector, what I have done is I have made sure that um, any prefix advertised by router 8 can get to router 9 and any prefix advertised by router 9 can get to router 8 because one of the rules in IBGP is if I receive a route from an IBGP neighbor I'm not going to advertise that route to another IBGP neighbor so if I receive the prefix from an EBGP neighbor I will advertise it to EBGP or IBGP neighbor but if I, uh, uh, if I receive a prefix from an IBGP neighbor, I'm just going to advertise it to EBGP neighbor. So running route reflector in this case makes sure that by configuring R8 and R9 as clients, they're going to receive every prefix from router 10 and of course they are going to advertise their prefixes to router 10. So this way we make sure that there is not going to be any loop in our network. No black hole of course is going to be introduced because some of routers do not know about the prefixes. Now route reflector is going to be only one of the solutions for this. The other solution when you have a high number of routers actually is going to be uh, confederation. So you can of course have multiple rod reflectors and you can configure those rod reflectors in a hierarchical manner and that's going to help but let's say that I have something like 50 rudder, 60 rudder, a lot of rudders in my uh, autonomous system. What I'm trying to do in this case is I'm going to split these routers into different groups. Each group is going to be its own autonomous system. Uh, as a matter of fact, a sub-autonomous system is a better name for that. And when configuring this, inside that sub-autonomous system, I can configure route reflector in case I need, or I can configure full mesh of IBGP neighborship, and everything is going to be all right and and uh, black holes of course are going to be removed from my network and there are some features in uh, confederation that is required to be understood before you start configuring now the thing is when you uh, have inside a, when you are inside a sub autonomous system uh, neighbors are going to be created and they are going to act exactly as IBGP neighbors. So everything is going to be the same. Let's say, for example, router 6, 4, and 7 are going to be configured here. What I'm going to do is to send, let's say, uh, prefixes from 6 to 4, and 4 is not going to advertise it to 7 because these two are IBGP neighbors unless I configure router 4, for example, as a route reflector. This is exactly what I'm trying to do in this configuration. What about uh, the routers that are in different or sub-autonomous system? When you are in different sub-ASs, your connection is kind of EBGP connection. And when I say kind of, because it doesn't have all the features of EBGP. One of the features that you need to be very careful is in this. When you uh, send the prefixes to another EBGP neighbor, you change the next hub to yourself. In this confederation, between sub-ASs, this doesn't happen unless you really specify that. So when I receive, let's say, some prefixes on router 7, and I send it to router 5, as a matter of fact, I'm not going to change the next hub. The next hub is going to be the device which is right here, whatever it was, and when it was sending the prefixes to router 7, it has changed the next hub to itself. So unless I change this specifically, next hub is not going to change. And also, uh, some of the features are like EBGP 
So you are going to see, for example, between this subautonomous system, there is a subautonomous system number. When you send a prefix from one to another, you're going to see something like an AS set inside parentheses, which is going to specify which sub AS has advertised this and which sub AS has been on my way to the originator of this prefix. So you are going to know everything about that. Now, what happens when I want to advertise a prefix out of my uh, autonomous system, out of the confederation itself? Let's see that, for example, I have a prefix advertised on, originated on router 7. It goes through sub AS 65025 and after that 65013. And when router 3 receives that, it sees uh, 65467 and 025 on the uh, AS set. And it will know that these uh, sub-autonomous systems has been on the way to the destination. But when router 3 advertises this to router 9, all of those are going to be removed. The only thing that router 9 sees is going to be this AS number, which is the actual autonomous system number, or let's say the confederation number in this case. So router 9 has no idea what is happening inside my autonomous system. And that is, of course, going to uh, be the case in all confederations. So let's just start the configuration and see what we are going to do. One of the things that you should know is configuration of confederation is a little bit tricky. And specifically, when you want to type the uh, BGP autonomous system number, you do not really go with the actual autonomous system number, which is AS100 in this case. You start with this. And after that, you should say that the confederation identifier, which is the actual EGP autonomous system number, is your, uh, is this number. The other thing is, because of this kind of a configuration, anytime you want to migrate to a non-confederation type of autonomous system, every configuration should be removed and created again with the new pattern. Which means that this is not a very, very, uh, I wouldn't say scalable, but I would say uh, just converting is going to be super drastic to the network and that's going to be time consuming and also a big burden because every router inside the configuration now should change the configuration and the configuration should be changed completely, not just by changing it one or two commands, all the configuration should change. As soon as I start the configuration, you will understand what I mean by that, but let's just start the configuration of this based on what we have here. There are three sub aces inside my autonomous system number 100. Uh, the first one consists of four, six, and seven, which I have just selected. 65,467 and you can see that I'm using the private autonomous system numbers in here uh, so that I'm not going to have any problem later. Here I have router 2 and 5 in the same subautonomous system uh, so which is going to be 65,025 and here I have router 1 and 3 in subautonomous system 65,013. Now, in the first subautonomous system on the left, what I'm going to do is to say router 4 is going to be a route reflector, so the configuration is going to be a little different from these two, because these two are going to have kind of a configuration like this. Now, the uh, inter sub AS neighborships, I'm going to create an adjacency between router 4 and 2, between 2 and 1. And at the bottom, between 7 and 5, and between 5 and 3. And the rest of the configuration is going to be like this. R1 is going to be neighbor with R8. R3 is going to be neighbor with R9. And also R6 is going to be neighbor with R12. So I need to start the configuration like that. Let's just start the configuration. So I'm going to start from router 4 on the left. So what I'm going to do is to say Aknas. Agnos is the credentials, and of course I mistyped the password. Then I'm going to go to configuration mode, 
and like I said, I'm going to say rather BGP, but not rather BGP 100, but the sub AS number, which is 65,467. Now that I have done this, this is part of a confederation. This is part of a uh, autonomous system. So I should say, I should say BGP confederation identifier is 100. With this, we know that we are part of autonomous system 100. And also, the other thing is, I should tell this confederation that there are, the, the sub ace that there are some other sub aces in this autonomous system, which I'm going to be aware of, and when I receive anything from them, I should know that they are part of my autonomous system. So, what I'm trying to say is, to say, BGP confederation peers, and one of them is 65,012, uh, 65,013, and the other one, 65,025. These are the two sub-ASs that I have in my confederation. The rest of the configuration is going to be similar to what we had here. I can use peer group or I can go with normal adjacency. What I'm going to say is neighbor 6666. Neighbor 6666 is in remote AS. Again, exact remote AS that I am in, uh, exact autonomous, sub autonomous system that I am in, in this. I don't say 100, I say this one. And my update source is going to be 4444. The other neighbor that I have is neighbor 7. So I'm going to say neighbor 7777 is in remote AS1 65467 and the same thing update source for this is going to be 4444 now I'm going to go under address family IPv4 unicast and I'm going to activate these two neighbors while saying that this is a route reflector client the other one activate also i should say this is a route reflector client and maybe i'm going to advertise a neighbor a network so i'm going to say network 4444 slash 32 is going to ad be advertising to bgp table so this is the configuration that I'm going to have. So I'm going to say commit and then end and WR. Okay, let's do the configuration on router 6 now. On router 6, what I'm going to say after authentication is router BGP 65467 and then the exact commands that I had on here. These two should be copied and pasted in rather six because they are exactly the same. Now the only I have two neighbors, so I'm going to have neighbor four 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 in remote AS sixty five four six seven, and update source is going to be. Uh, 6666 and also I have a uh, neighbor 12 which is going to be this I'm going to say 10 6 12 12 which is in remote AS 400 for now it is down but that's okay and after that I go to address family IPv4 unicast under this I'm going to activate these two so this one should be activated and this one should be activated. So I'm going to advertise a network as well, which is 6666 slash 32. Let's commit the configuration and and WR. So for now, if I just say do show, not do, of course, show IP BGP summary, I should see that uh, neighbor 4444 is up and running. Okay, let's do the same thing on router 7. On router 7, what I'm going to do is to say, Aknas, Aknas, 
and en configure terminal rather bgp 65467 bgp configuration identifier is going to be 100 bgp configuration peers uh, is going to be 65,025, 65,013. Okay, what is my neighbors? Uh, the first neighbor is going to be 4444. In remote AS, uh, 65467. And I'm using update source of, let's say, this is 7, of course, 7777. Seven, seven, seven. The other neighbor is going to be 10, 6, 12, 12, which is in remote AS 400. And let's go to address family IPv4 unicast. And I'm going to say these two should be activated. This one is activating. And now this one is going to be activated too. And also let's advertise a network. 7777-32 okay I'm going to commit and so far I'm going to check my uh, configuration so if I just say on router 7 to show IP BGP now you can see that I have received 6666 and I have 7777 let me just do it one more time this time now I have 4444 as well so this is going to be my BGP adjacency inside the sub AS. Very much similar to what we had before. Okay, now I have some configuration which I'm going to do. Between router 4 and 2, I'm going to have a neighborship. Between router 7 and 5, I'm going to have a neighborship. This is, this can be done using loopback interfaces again or using uh, the interfaces, uh, the direct connection in, uh, which has this interfaces. I'm going to use loopback interfaces. And I'm going to show you something which uh, on eBGP happens. And here we are going to examine that. And that is when you, on, on normal eBGP, you need to go with eBGP multi-hop. So if I just go to router 4, and I'm going to go back to router BGP65467. I'm going to say neighbor 2222. Uh, it is in remote AS65025. And then I'm going to say I'm using an update source of 4444. So a little different from what we normally do in uh, an EBGP adjacency here, I'm just using my loopback interface. And let's go under address family IPv4 unicast and activate this neighbor as well. So I'm going to just say activate. And then I'm going to say commit. Okay. Uh, if these two are not in the same subnet in EBGP, uh, there are solutions to fix the problem. One of the solutions is you increase the eBGP multi-hop value. By default, multi-hop for eBGP is 1, but you can increase it up to 255. Of course, you do not need to go up that size, but you should go with 2, 3, or uh, the maximum hops between you and the destination is going to decide what the TTL should be here. The other solution is disable connected check, which means that uh, do not really care about the subnet uh, which I am in and whether the neighbor is in the same subnet as I am. Uh, if you say eBGB multi-hop, disable connected check by default is going to be, um, you know, executed. But if you just want to go with disable connected check, it is possible to use the command itself. But I'm going to check to see whether I really need this in this topology. I'm going to go to router to, uh, 7 and do the same thing. So I'm going to go to router 7, exit the address family. I'm going to say my neighbor is 5555, which is in remote AS 65025. And then it uses an update source of my loopback, which is 7777. And under address family IPv4 unicast, this neighbor could be activated. 
then I'm going to say commit. Let's go to router 2 and start the configuration here. So I like now, I like now, uh, one more time. Let's go to configuration mode. Router BGP 65025. So you know that you should go with BGP configuration identifier and say this is 100. And also, you know that now you should introduce your peers in the same autonomous system, which is 65,467, 65,013. And now I'm going to start with the neighbors. The first neighbor is going to be 5555, which is in remote AS 65,025. And it is using an update source of 2222. The next neighbor, however, is not in the same sub AS as I am. So I'm going to say my next neighbor is 4444, which is in remote AS 656467. And again, I'm using an update source of 2222. And the next one, I have another adjacency on the right to router one, which I'm going to configure this right now. So I'm going to say neighbor one 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 is in remote AS sixty five thousand thirteen, and I am using um, an update source of two 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 two. So router two now has been configured with these addresses. All I need to do is to activate them. So, 1 is going to be activated. 4 is going to be activated. And finally, 5 is going to be activated. And of course, I'm going to advertise my loopback interface into BGP table. So I'm going to say commit and now we are going to check something on router 4. So let's go back to router 4. And here I'm going to say do show IPBGP summary. And here it is. We are in complete uh, neighborship with this uh, router 2 actually. Uh, and, and this is not in our sub aces. Uh, but this is okay and and like I said in case you encountered such a problem as uh, multiple hops to the destination then those two commands that I just said to you disable connected check is going to be a good one because these are in the same autonomous system so that would be okay you don't really need to go with ebgp multi hop but in case you go with ebgp multi hop you can just use that as well Okay, so this part is done, and on router 7, of course, I can just say show IP BGP summary. And it says that uh, router 5 is idle, because on router 5, I guess, I have not configured anything yet. So let's do the configuration here quite fast. Rather BGP sixty five thousand twenty five BGP confederation identifier is going to be one hundred BGP peers are going to be six five four six seven six five zero one three and my neighbors. So the first one is going to be two 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 which is in remote AS 65025 and update source of 5555 next one is going to be 7777 which is in another remote AS so that is 65467 and again the same thing update source of 5555 and finally I have neighbor 3333, which is in remote AS 65013, with an update source of 5555. And finally, I need to 
go under address family IPv4 unicast and activate these. So the first one, three is going to be activated. Seven. And finally two. And also let's advertise 5555 into BGP table, although this is not um, necessary, but again we have it. This means that now that I have done this, if I go back to router 7, try this one more time, I am in complete adjacency with 5555. Let's do the ra last part of the configuration on router 1 and 3. So let's do this. And then we are going to check everything. So configuration mode, rather BGP 6513013, uh, BGP configuration identifier is going to be 100, and the peers are going to be 65025-65467. Let's go with neighbor 3333. Remote AS100 and update source of 1111. Next neighbor is neighbor 5. So 5555 65025. Update source is going to be configured as 1111. And finally, I am neighbor with router 9. 10399, which is in remote AS 200. And that's it. So let's go to address family IPv4 unicast. And I'm going to say this one activate. This one activate. And this one activate. And let's advertise one 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 one. And commit. And finally, we are going to have rather three. Oh, of course, this neighbor. This is rather one. So I should have gone with something else. So this one was wrong. Let me just configure this. I should say. No, this this was not connected to router one. Uh, neighbor ten one eight eight is connected. Sorry for this. So I'm going to say in two hundred. Address family IPv4 unicast. Let's just activate this one. So I'm going to say commit. Okay, and final one is router 3. So router 1 is uh, an adjacent with router 2. What, what did I say, router 5? So, so let's, let's do this. I just missed configure some of uh, the neighbors. So I should say neighbor 2222 two, two, two should be in here. 65,025 and update source of 1111 address family IPv4 unicast is going to activate this so commit and do show IPBGP summary says that I am adjacent with two right now. It is idle and with three because I have not configured it. With 10 A188, I am configured. So let me just do it. So with two is okay, but three is not configured yet. So I'm going to configure three as the last one. Agnos, Agnos, and the video is taking too long, but I'm trying to be as fast as possible. So, rather BGP is 65,013. BGP Confederation Identifier is gonna be 100. And peers are gonna be 65,025, 65,467. 
Now my neighbors are 10, 3, 9, 9, which is in remote, yes, 200. The other neighbor is 1111 in remote is 65013 with update source of 3333. The other neighbor is 5, which is in remote is 65025. And update source of 3333. Now let's go to address family IPv4 unicast and activate each one of these. This one is going to be activated. This one. And finally, this one. And let's advertise 3333 into BGP table. So I'm going to say commit. And now that I have set commit, let's just end and save all the configuration. Okay, so let's do something. I'm going to say show IP BGP summary, and I just want to see, let's just say terminal width is 256, and do this one more time. Show IP BGP summary. So on router three, router one is inactive. On router one, router three is never idle. Let me check the configuration to see what I have missed here. On router one, I'm going to show run router BGP. Here it says that neighbor three 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 is in remote is uh 100 but ip source is okay and neighbor is activated and if i say ping 3333 3, 3, 3, it is act uh, accessible and rather 3 what did i have show run rather bgp so i have said rather 1 is in my as and rather 1 of course I have configured everything correctly. Okay, this is a problem. You see that? So let's go back to router 1 and do the configuration. Configure terminal, router PGP 65013. No neighbor list, but this neighbor should be in 65013. That was the misconfiguration. And under address family IPv4 unicast, this should be activated. Okay, so that was good. And NWR. Now if I say show IP BGP summary, everything seems to be good. On router 2, it's good. On router 1, show IP BGP summary is good, router 4, 5, 6, and show IP BGP summary, okay, so this one is off, so no problem, everything seems to be great. Now that I have this configuration, let me just increase the length of this as well, uh, width actually, not length. 256 okay let's see the prefixes now show ip bgp on router 6 as you can see i am receiving some prefixes from different places now everything that i receive has gone through multiple uh, sub-autonomous systems let's say that the prefixes that i have received from autonomous system 200 on the right from router 10 for example i have advertised 10 10 10 10 which is in autonomous system number 200, then it has entered my autonomous system. I do not see my autonomous system number, but I see the confederation uh, sub-autonomous systems here. So it has gone through 65,013, and after that, 65,025, and then I have received it here. And if I just go to router 10, Will I see this sub-autonomous system numbers? So let's go to router 10 and say 
I can else I can else and say show IP BGP for sure I'm receiving 6666 but it has not gone uh, through sub A it says because I don't know about that because the neighbor the ABGP neighbor doesn't send me any information about sub autonomous system what it sends is this one it says that this prefix is for in uh, autonomous system number 100 so seems that everything is configured good so let's recap everything as you can see autonomous system 100 is now a confederation inside this confederation i have three different sub autonomous systems each one of them have been configured with some of the routers in case i have uh, multiple routers and full mesh is not enabled in that i can use route reflectors inside my sub autonomous system as i have done in 65467 on the left and router 4 has been configured as route reflector uh, and the other thing that i wanted to show you is between sub autonomous systems uh, between uh, these ebgp neighborship the next up doesn't change to the router so if i just go to router 2 on router 2 i'm going to say show ip vgp let's say for example 6666 you can see that it says the next hub is 6666 it has not changed to 4444 and if i just go to router 1 and check the same thing on router 1 you can see that i still see the next hub as 6666 and between the subautonomous systems next hub doesn't change the final thing is a connectivity test i want to see if i can reach to 10 10 10 10 from any of these let's say from router 4 router 7 whichever that you choose on router 4 for example which is open right now i would say show ip bgp 10 10 10 10 and here we have two b's so you can see that i can go out through this next hub and through this next hub but this one is installed of course let's just do uh, some ping so if i just say ping 10 10 10 10 and i'm going to source it from 7777 and it says that the ping uh cannot assign requested address oh it says 4444 sorry because i'm on router 4 and you can see that the ping goes through without any problem we can just trace it to the destination so if i just say trace route protocol ip vrf global target ip address 10 10 10 10 and source address is going to be 4444 because i'm on router 4 actually and yes and the rest of course just enter and you can see that it goes through router 1 then to router 8 and then to router 10 to the destination so the configuration is like this and everything is working just fine i hope this has been informative for you and see you in next video